<sighs> what the fuck? guys and welcome back to the channel and welcome back to beautiful British Columbia this typical February weather pissing down as usual but at least you don't have to shovel it I got a story for you let's go in the car and have a chat so where does one start well let's start at the beginning so approximately a month ago I came home and I noticed that when I pulled the Model S out that there was a couple of drops of um, coolant so a nice sort of greeny blue coolant uh, was under the front of the car so that was about the time where the Tesla mobile service came out and replaced my CPU and as he had the frunk out and the frunk tub out you could clearly see that that's where the coolant uh, reservoir is and I actually pointed out to him I said look it's below minimum uh, should we fill it up and he says well no 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 uh, because the height changes based on the temperature of the battery I'm not gonna doubt him but I don't think it's very much I don't think it's like a, a regular ice engine uh, that when it gets hot I don't know I don't know but I, I believed him anyway so uh, let's fast forward another week and then I noticed uh, instead of just one or two spots there was actually four or five spots now and uh, so I said that's it screw it I am gonna go on the mobile app and I am gonna book a service appointment and in that service appointment I wrote down what the problems were and I also attached two pictures now in these pictures you can clearly see that there are puddles small but there were puddles of coolant underneath the front of my uh, car so they they booked uh i think it was a a, a mobile service was like s seven to ten days ahead and i thought okay well that's that's pretty good they're going to deal with it really fast uh and then in the meantime i actually went to lord co and i bought a uh four four liters of or a quor, uh, gallon uh of coolant and it was the specific bmw uh, coolant which is what the uh, Tesla's use uh, so then I was uh, looking online on how to add coolant because I'm kind of concerned about the the, the below minimum uh, level of my coolant so I looked online and right there in the manual black and white do not top up your coolant nah. so I didn't uh, so the coolant is actually just sitting in the garage uh, waiting for something to happen maybe when it's out of warranty I think you're allowed to I don't know uh, so I did make an appointment and one day before no two days before the appointment I took another picture because there was now a long line of fluid going from the front of where my car we parked uh, all the way out to the front of the garage as if it was pouring out as I was driving backwards like there was puddles of it, like large amounts of it so um, I uploaded a picture of that with the long river coolant river of um, coolant so I attached that picture to the appointment uh, sort of updated it and then they were supposed to come out the following day uh, February 19th and they were going to meet me at my workplace and I checked the weather because I know they have to take the the frunk out and all that kind of stuff so then I uh, the at, at night so the night before they were coming out to my work site I got a text saying can't do it uh, this is something that needs to be done in the service center uh, therefore your mobile um, mobile appointment has been cancelled and you now have to go into Vancouver uh, to have this looked at and this was at five or six the night before they were going to show up between eight and ten the following morning and now I was 
for certain and for sure that there was absolutely no coolant left in the vehicle at all and I wasn't going to drive the uh, 50 kilometers uh, to work for four days um, well that would have been 400 kilometers because 50 kilometers each way and then uh, go down to Vancouver there's no way that the car could handle that and I didn't want to cause any more issues with the battery or with the cooling system so at five o'clock I phoned Tesla service and of course you get no answer where you do get an answer is if you click three for sales they will always answer the phone at five o'clock at night if you are interested or wanting to purchase a Tesla so after two rung, rings boom uh, Tesla how can I help you great sorry to have to use this but I, I have a bit of a problem so I explained to uh, the salesman what the problem is and he goes you know what I think there is uh, the service department is still here let's see if I can transfer your call so uh, he transferred my call and to the sa uh, service guy I explained everything saying I don't think I have any sir uh, any liquid in my vehicle I can't drive to and from work and then go into Vancouver what is the earliest you can see me because I think this is uh, I'd say an emergency <laughs> So he says, you know what, uh, bring it in tomorrow morning first thing and we'll take care of it. And if it needs to stay over, we'll give you a courtesy car to be able to get you out and about. And uh, yeah, we'll take care of this for you 100%. Don't worry about it. Like, holy crap, that's, that's pretty amazing. So fast forward to the next morning at 4 o'clock in the morning, I wake up because Vancouver's about an hour and 15 minutes that way. And if I get in... You know the the six thirty seven o'clock traffic. Uh, I'm hooped. Like you're 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 going. It's going to take you two and a half hours to get in Vancouver. It's absolutely horrible. So four o'clock in the morning, I wake up. Five o'clock in the morning, or a quarter to five, I actually leave to head downtown, uh, Vancouver, and I pull in to the service center at quarter after six. Still dark out. And I knew that I had uh, to wait for another two hours, but you know, I'd rather wait two hours in their service bay than uh, sitting in traffic, especially with a vehicle that doesn't have any coolant. Uh, so pulled in, eight o'clock, gate goes up, I drive in, the tech comes over, I said, like, this is who I am. I do have an appointment. I was told to come in. This is the problem. And he goes, yeah, yeah, okay. And he's, he started writing some stuff out. And he says, I, I need you to sign here. Just so you know, it's about $150 an hour for us to look into what's wrong with it. And then uh, whatever needs to be done is on top of that. And I go, well, no, I think it's still under warranty. And he goes, I know. Yeah, okay, well, well this is just sign here. And, and, you know, if it is under warranty, this will be... Uh, dismissed uh, but if it's not under warranty you're gonna pay 150 just for them to look at it and then whatever the part costs so I said yeah but I think it's still under warranty this is not normal and he says well you never know like whatever if it's no fault to your to you and it's a part issue then uh, we'll take care of it but if it's a, a rock that's come up and smashed it and has nothing to do with our, our faulty parts it's you know, act of God, uh, then you'll be on the hook for this. And I was like, ah, shit, you know, this is just not, I, I just don't like spending money. So, um, I go in and, and I wait, uh, sit and wait at the, uh, in the you know, service area in the customer service area, have a couple of cups of coffee, I watch, uh, some Netflix on my phone and the service rep comes out and he says okay well we've uh, established what it is it's a four-way valve that's a faulty four-way valve that's uh, connecting the coolant and it's cracked and it's spewing out and all that kind of stuff and I said well that's that's good and he says yeah it's gonna the good news is it's gonna take about uh, uh, two hours to because we have the part in stock it's gonna uh, it's gonna take about two hours for put it in and pull it out and all that kind of stuff and then the price is about five hundred and seventy dollars I said I think it's under warranty and he goes oh your vehicles under warranty I said yeah my vehicles under warranty and uh, the only uh, reason that I would have to pay it was if I was at fault or I caused the damage and he said well the service tech here doesn't say anything about uh, customers at fault so we'll take care of that so they took care of that 
what a fantastic team that Tesla guys are, and I, I do appreciate them uh, fitting me in. So at the end of the day, it took two hours. Um, it costs nothing, but it would have cost five hundred and seventy dollars. And and I don't know if that's just for the part or the whole shit shamil, but I think it it might have been for the whole thing that it would have been five seventy. So there you go. My car broke and now car fixed, which is uh, very good. What I did notice is that when when I felt or when the coolant was low, I did notice that any time I charged, even at home on you know the the seventy two amp or the sixty two amp, that the, the the fans would come on the cooling fans, and I think that's because there was absolutely no coolant in it, and it's this sort of white noise humming in the background from the front. So there you go. That is my story. There isn't any more. Um, if this was out of warranty, I think that I would be uh, uh, up shit creek. I would be in five seventy four the the coolant four way valve. And probably three to five, eh, three to four grand uh, for the CPU. I still have 9,000 kilometers left on my unlimited warranty. Uh, so A, I'm not driving it as much. I'm using uh, the woman I live with's car as much as I can. And uh, yeah, I gotta, <laughs> I don't want to, don't want to drive it. How terrible is that? Anyway, uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Please make a comment uh, down below uh, if you have any questions or concerns. I do answer all my comments. Uh, anyway, you guys take care and have a great, uh, great time. Cheers.